My name is Kwame Dawes. I'm a poet. And um, I want to read two poems to you. One will be my poem, and the other will be a poem by somebody who I would call a mentor. Um, it may seem obvious that I will name my father, Neville Dawes, as a mentor, but there's a little biographical detail that it's worth pointing out that my father died um, when I was in my very early 20s. And so we never really had conversations about poetry. So the lessons I learned from him as a mentor who continues to mentor me come from my reading his poems um, and learning from his work. And in a strange way, I think, um, setting that as a standard against which I try to, I try to, um, to reach for, uh, be challenged by, and be moved by. So the two poems are related, and they're about a village in the hills of Jamaica on the north coast called Sturge Town, um, a village that dates back to 1838 when the slaves from that region, the enslaved people from that region, um, secured their freedom and with the help of some aid from, from anti-slavery movements in the UK formed um, multiple villages across the island. And Sturge Town is in a sense an ancestral village where my father lived, my great grandfather, my grandfather all grew up and lived and were born. So here's two poems. The first is by Neville Dawes called Acceptance. I praise the glorious summers of pimento, sun purple riper than wet red clay smell of my youth by corn light and river run. As dog and I, we scream the small green hill and the salt smooth wind from the leaping sea sang in the yellow sunlight. I praise the dumb scared child I was in coffee groves and the barbecues of graves smelling of ghost old country flesh laid by my father for his tribe, fictitious as angels. A small alone boy riding to harvest hymns in the green of the day as the shackle bell tongued on the churchy hilltop. I praise the legends we made when the drunk hawks and worse were merry, waltzed up the day, hallowed the mountains of birds and the nestling curve of the reeling river swam. Those eyes reading the first garden's blush and Adam's when weathers twisted the old thunder voice. I was King Arthur's irrelevant steed on the lightning page, castling all races, all men, the drunk hawks and worse, climbing together to the top of the colorless rain in the dappling sun. I praise all this, returning to a shower of mango blossoms, the creaking village, the old eyes, the graves, the sun's kiss. And lonely as ever, as the bare cedars, I walk by the stream where boys still plash, dusking and falling in the star apple sunset, and find her there, ancient as the lost lands, bandanaed and gray and calling. Then, I read the monumental legend of her love and grasp her wrinkled hands. Acceptance by Neville Dawes. And now a poem more recent, which is my poem called Sturge Town Redux. By three o'clock, the walls are stained with shadows. These colonial walls that we have kept despite the revolution and the new dialect of independence, kept for their history. Here, below the jutting balcony of a wrought iron fence, centuries of paint and rust create an artist's strip of contained beauty. Every blotch of paint, every spot of decomposed dye, like the artful peeling of brittle scabs first, the quick pain, the pulsing, the soft seep of blood and then the pixelated skin. Below the makeshift clothesline, a pair of loose-waisted red panties scar the deep purple of a cave into the cheap rental it has been. 
that simple moment, that piece of garment, that suggestion of daily lives, ordinary, necessary, and mortal, becomes the subject of this instant, the caught second where the scene freezes and waits for the evaluation of what we carry inside us. What I must confess is that the house set on the face of a mountain surrounded by thick trees, despite the rot and decay has kept its shape, is the place I call an ancestral home, though no one is sure where the deeds are. And I have no head for real estate and inheritances, just words to carve the fading permanence of memory. Still, as if to plant a claim on the pimento barbecue there, are the red panties, a kind of flag of ownership with not a soul inside. I imagine a woman, her skin deep as roasted coffee beans, lifting her gleaming legs over the high grass and stones, peering around to be sure she's not watched, clutching her back to her side before she walks along the narrow road down the hill. My cousin perhaps saw her a squatter who has battered for the birthright of my cousin and my tribe. I will follow her on the road, catch up to her, and then ask her as casually as you offer a stranger a glass of cool water, which part is home? And she will say, home is which part you want to bury, as if that is the end of it as if she can now turn a bend in the road, step behind a roadside croton hedge and vanish down a path into the dark valley. For poets, it is the standards that we set before us that influence us, that guide us, that challenge us, that humble us, that allows us to eventually find our own voice in the gap between our slavish imitation of, our reach for, and where we end. Thank you very much. <laughs>